What's up, YouTube? All right. So in this episode, I presented a preview of this showing that I was going to use the Auric Orbiter for my Auric fans and do a really dirty job and just show the effectiveness of the Auric Orbiter. And I've got messages from a lot of guys who started the business um, based on the Auric Orbiter back when I was kind of getting involved in it. And so there was a huge learning curve for me when it comes to the Auric Orbiter. And that's kind of why I'm doing this video. And I want to share that with the people who question me and say, hey, how come you no longer use the Auric Orbiter? Or why are you just using it for stairs? You know, and then, of course, you've seen me progress on the natural course of evolution when it comes to equipment. I wanted to improve after seeing the results and how long it takes to do the job and how many pads and how small the driver is and um, things that you'll go through too if you employ the Auric Orbiter for professional use. And I went up to the 175 rotary, which is the Farag, it's F-A-R-A-G, an eBay model that ran about seven, I think seven or eight hundred dollars. So not that much more than a, an Auric Orbiter. They run about three to four hundred. And I got really impressive results with that. And I had to modify it and put some bigger wheels on it in order to pull the weight upstairs. And so those of you that were along the journey witnessed my natural evolution with the low moisture VLM equipment. And then if you watched recently, I tried to weld the bracket that was holding the bigger wheels on. Come to find out the whole base of that machine was made of some kind of composite, like a concrete or I don't know what it, what you call it, but it crumbled apart. So needless to say, I put that in my workshop and until I have time to redesign something or take it to a fabrication shop and have it fixed, I'm unable to use it. And I also tried the shower feed tank and versus the pre-spray. And so I've just continued to evolve. I also have the Mighty ECO 14 Pro Lite, which is probably one of the best cleaning machines I own. It's the big chrome looking one. I don't have the tank on that or the sprayers. And that one, I, I found out, you know, I was doing between four to five jobs a day before I had my helper come aboard, take on some of the work. And at 115 pounds or whatever the mighty weighs, going up and down stairs was just killing me. So I ended up, I used it on commercial jobs and I do use it on single story homes. In fact, I used it on a home today that was a single story home, did a wonderful job. And either, either that or you have to pull it up the stairs. If you're a younger man or a younger woman, you may be able to do that many jobs and pull it up and down the stairs, you know, more than I was able to. So, but you, you can take this journey with me and you can learn from my mistakes. And I'm not saying these are mistakes, but you can get an idea of what equipment is going to work for you when you're ready to uh, purchase something that's a little more professional than the Auric Orbiter. The next one I ended up getting is the Koblenz. It's a 13 inch. It's a three quarter horsepower unit. It does have the smaller wheels but it weighs about 62 or 68 pounds, so I can grab it and just pull it right up the stairs, no problem. And that's kind of been my go-to residential machine. It is a very big upgrade from the Orc Orbiter. Number one, you're not gonna find that in someone's closet at their home. The Orc Orbiter was originally designed to be used around the house. There's a lot of videos seven, eight years ago, if you research, 
where homeowners are polishing wood or they're polishing tile or laminate. Um, and then, you know, carpet started to become uh, involved with the auric orbiter. And a lot of people were showing, you know, hey, if you don't want to pay a professional to come clean your carpet, you could buy this machine. Here's how you could, you know, clean your carpets. I don't think that the people that were instructing you how to clean carpets, or at least the ones that are not licensed and insured, and you could tell, you know, which videos are just residential people, homeowners. Those people, I don't think, were instructing people to start a business. So where I got involved in this and had to learn that, you know, certain chemicals are not the right answer. You know, when I got involved in this, I was told some of the -the over-the-counter stuff was fine. Um, There's a big difference in um, what pH is, a neutral balance pH, 7 or less. Um, People think that that means zero residue. It's rinse-free. That is not true. Um, pH, I believe, stands for potential hydrogen or probable hydrogen. I think it's potential hydrogen. You can look it up. I'm not sure. But it has nothing to do with residue. It has to do with the acid and alkalinity scale, yes. But what actually has to do with residue is soap. So if you're using any products that have a surfactant in it or a detergent or soap, and you don't rinse it, you're going to end up with residue. And a lot of those products that say, you know, they're neutrals, no rinse, they were meant for harder wood floors or hard surfaces, not a porous surface like porous surface like carpets. So just beware. I, I used them. In fact, I did this house. Um, I do this house every six months. And I've used... Uh, those products when I first got involved in this and I did notice the following time I think I was back in four months instead of six months it got resoiled a lot quicker so just keep that in mind and you know the truck mount guys or the steam cleaner guys they're doing a little bit different than or a lot different than VLM because they can put down the heavier soaps and detergents and then use a rinse and what they're doing is they're actually spraying a clean water and they're rinsing the product off the carpet no method is going to get a hundred percent of whatever we use hot water guys or low moisture guys the only way you could do that is rip the carpet up and take it to one of those rug spas where they clean the area rugs and so fully submerge it clean it and then press it out and dry it. But these carpets are attached to people's floors. And no matter what method you use, when you're done cleaning and you lay your hand down, you usually have a little bit of moisture. And that moisture is from whatever you sprayed on the carpet. Especially with VLM, it's basically part of whatever chemical you used. So... If you're going to use this and you're going to get started and you want to scale the business into a more professional business, then I recommend that you use encapsulation products because there's zero residue, zero soap. And what's going to happen is that product that remains behind is going to dry down to a crystal. It's going to break apart and be vacuumed out. So that's going to help you with your auric orbiter or any VLM machine. But here we're addressing the the auric orbiter. And if you don't want to scale the business and you just want to charge 20 bucks to your friends or people in your apartment community, then, you know, go with God, but go. I have no remorse, no, no input for you. You can do that. That's fine. But if you're going to pose yourself or set yourself up as a professional business, yeah, you can start with the Oric Orbiter, but you're gonna, your intention is going to be to scale, to grow. Think of it as starting a jewelry store and going down to the local farmer's market. You rent a little tent booth, 
do that for a couple months once you start making money and get your name out there you might want to rent a commercial unit and take that natural progression or evolution with your business go to the next step or maybe get a higher online presence and get uh, you know someone to set you up with a lot of social media and whatnot so think of it in terms of that so where I had never even you know I never experienced low moisture cleaning because all I did was either truck mount or the latter part when my sons no longer worked with me I was using a big monster portable unit and I think that's back that's about when I started posting videos um, because I was working on my own and I thought yeah I needed something to make the job interesting so I started filming YouTube videos when there was nobody there and it was just me so I could document my work it was kind of interested interesting gave me something to do and when I ventured off into this like I said I hit a learning curve it fascinated me probably just like it does you that this auric orbiter can actually make you money and yes it can clean carpet now this auric orbiter will take probably four times as long as my mighty ECO to do this job it would probably take at least three times as long versus the Koblenz. And it just has to do with the performance of the equipment. And again, we're not knocking the Oracle Orbiter because you're gonna see this thing's gonna do a fantastic job, but you can see I'm going over and over it. And I promise to give you some tips if you are starting out with this so that you can do an effective job. And one of the tips today that I'm going to share with you is have you, I've watched back on some of my videos and you see the little tag spinning around on that microfiber zinger pad? You can see I'm getting good movement. Sometimes if I bear down a little bit and push forward on more aggressive areas of the carpet, it will slow down. Now, I've seen videos of my own and other Oric Orbiter users where that pad doesn't look like it's moving at all. <laughs> and a lot of times it's not. And it's because, um, you know, I was a big proponent of cotton pads, Iron Man pads. Now, they work great with the bigger one and a half horsepower motor. That thing will grind out and move. That thing will move anything that you put underneath it. But the Oric Orbiter, the smaller motor, and up against uh, frise carpets or, you know, these thick nylons or whatever, you're going to get a resistance. And the resistance will slow the pad, which will slow the performance down, which will, in, will it's not going to enhance the cleaning. You get the drill. So keep an eye on that. And again, I, you know, I was a big proponent of saying, oh, yeah, you got to have an Iron Man. A lot of guys will say, oh, that's why I use the original Auric Orbiter pad. Now, that is a synthetic pad, and most of the synthetics are um, made of like a plastic. So, yes, they're going to spin freely. No, they're not going to clean well. So, when I used the Auric Orbiter and I was not filming and I had learned and I didn't share a lot of this with you guys um, during that time is I learned that the microfiber actually moves very well and it cleans just as good as the cotton when it comes to the auric orbiter and the difference is the way that you know when you look at a Iron Man pad if I had an Iron Man pad and I cleaned this far and I laid it down and showed you you'd go, wow. And it's because the fiber of cotton has a flat end, like a piece of string and it's flat on the end or a piece of licorice and it's flat. So the dirt shows on the surface of the pad, which means it can build up quite a bit. It does absorb in some of the liquid. Microfiber, the strands look like uh, little sunbursts. So all the way up through the filament, it has all those little fingers so when the dirt, when it's picking up dirt, it's not just sitting on the surface of the fiber. It's being drawn up through those little fingers. 
so it won't appear it won't appear as dirty but if i've tested it myself i've done half a room with an iron man and half with a zinger dropped it in both in a bucket and the water's the same same dirty same shade of um, black in the bucket from wringing those out and the visual effects of the carpet are pretty equal so there you go that's definitely tip number one when it comes to an auric and i know i'm sorry if you guys bought a bunch of iron man pads um you know you can still do whatever you want but watch the movement you see how mine's moving and i don't push really hard anymore when i move this machine because it it slows it down it inhibits the the natural uh, rotation or the orbital and that's what's going to clean you need that thing moving in fact if you get a real dirty area and you just set it there and let it spin it's going to clean a lot better than applying force and if you look back at my videos yeah i'm guilty i used to put my foot on top of it because <laughs> i wanted it to grind down deeper well folks that's what a drill with a brush is for if you need to come back and spot an area or pre-spot you want to use that high powered drill and you can put as much force on that as you want but when it comes to this piece of equipment you want it to spin freely but you want to use something that's going to be more absorbent than um, you know anything that's synthetic and you can research that look it up for yourselves and the the second thing with um, the auric orbiter or uh, something that I would suggest I think we already talked about the the chemical um, you know here on this job I actually was testing a product called um, it's dragon citrus fire so it's basically dragon fire which dries to a crystal but they're using a D-limonene and they're testing that for the cleaning abilities on more dirty carpet and it's doing a fantastic job um, here but I could have got the same results probably with the um, green dragon I might have had to go over a few areas a little longer or the awesome end cap and there's nothing organic as far as um, urine or stuff like that so I didn't really opt for any uh, go oxy which is a peroxide booster didn't need it the dragon fire um, has a a form i believe of peroxide in it itself a sodium percarbonate so i i don't have to worry about you know the solution that got left behind or the dirt that i didn't pick up because it will be encapsulated dry down to a brittle crystal and be vacuumed out you can go on uh ncap store i think some of the other suppliers have the petri dish tests where you know i know ncap store even took i think it was awesome ncap and they put a soapy product like a dawn dish soap mixed it up and poured it in the petri dish and then added an equal amount of the encapsulant or the awesome ncap to see what it would do if it would be sticky or if it would be able to dry that soap residue down and it did it attached to the soaps and dried to a crystal so that the residue could actually be removed. And that's beneficial when you go into a home where you know the customer has been using Resolve or home concoctions and spotting or using a Bissell machine. Then you know your encapsulation is going to be effective in there and you're not going to have that wick back. It's going to crystallize the residue and break it off and be vacuumed up so and you know with the auric orbiter if you absolutely wanted to just amaze your customers you could get a air mover now i don't do this i don't have the time but you could if you're just starting out and you want to impress your customers and start to build up a clientele so that you can scale and afford to buy um you know more appropriate equipment you could put a big air mover down here let it dry maybe go to lunch and come back once it's dry do the post vacuuming for the customer explaining that it's crystallizing and you're removing any residue and whatnot and i think at that point 
you would be able to visually show the customer here's my final results i've done the post vacuuming for you it looks beautiful it's going to stay this way there's no wick back it's dry so those are things as a new business that you would have time to do that i i don't have time to do i'm moving through um, several jobs a day on note this room here had kool-aids built all over it and the last time i used uh, an end cap on it and this time you know the kool-aid was spilled after my last i think the cleaning was in december and it came right out this time so that kind of proves the anti-resoiling properties of the professional products as well so you can study that learn that yourself this is one of the rooms that i completed and this is a teenager's room with a gaming center in it the hallway if you go back that thing was just really filthy now keep in mind there's always going to be some natural wear and tear some darker areas you know we're not magicians we can't make old dingy carpet brand new again but we can certainly make it clean and sanitary and from a visual standpoint i'm impressed i think this looks great and this whole job was done with the orc orbiter i used i didn't even do a two-step look at that dining room my goodness i didn't even use a scrubbing pad and then a pad on the the follow-up I just used the zinger because I wanted to see the two things, the scrubbing action and the absorption of the microfiber to see just how good I could get it with just one step. So you could have actually pre-scrubbed this. You can even use a brush if you want to with the Auric. Um, that's up to you. But the living room came out beautiful. Everything looks good. And again... I'm trying to share some tips on my experience with the Oric Orbiter because yeah, that's kind of where I got started in this VLM. And I did make a lot of mistakes and I did think that, oh, this is the only machine I need. I'll just buy multiple Oryx. And, you know, yeah, it's going to take me a little bit longer, but I'll grind it out. I even did a 3,000 square foot commercial building, if you look back, <laughs> which now I, I kill myself because... Um, knowing once you experience the other equipment you start to realize man there is a natural I keep saying a natural evolution or progression but there really is and there's going to be some people that just don't want to hear that they just want to stick with the Oric Orbiter and they want to go to Kroger's or Safeway and use non-professional detergents and um, you know if that's you then you know you do what you do you and i'm just recommending there's no cost savings involved in that there's just you want to be professional and uh, you want to set yourself apart so you can grow and scale your business these are the two pads from the living room and i put a microfiber cloth there so you could contrast and see the white now remember the cotton pads would have showed a lot more dirt but these things are full of soil because the nature of the microfiber strand and i will say microfiber is taking over in the auto detailing uh, world and it's for good reason i think the more you start to understand it the the more you see the benefit of it and i did mention that pH has nothing to do with residue. Just because you get a product over the counter and it's a neutral pH and it's rinse-free, it's not rinse-free on fiber. Just know that. If it has soap in it, you have to rinse it. And, you know, that's just the bottom line. You can break alkaline down by using like a, a high acid like vinegar and um, it's still you're not you're just playing chemistry on someone's carpets so if you start out if you're going to do low moisture then you need to use encapsulation products period that's my learning that's how i've evolved i also used to say i'd never need to steam clean again 
that's not true. There are some cases where VLM is inappropriate and steam cleaning is recommended. And I do, I refer those to my steam cleaning friends because I realize it's just not worth the trouble um, to go through with our method. You know, if you buy a brand new carpet and all you've ever done is VLM and you maintain it and take your shoes off and vacuum regularly, you may go 15 years and never need steam cleaning as long as you continue to use VLM. But there are limitations and that's the way it is. So I hope this helps you guys that are out there using the Auric Orbiter. And I hope it does prove that yes, it's effective. So when people say, oh, you can't do that, a lot of the professionals get mad at the guys that are not doing it professionally because it looks bad on us when you're not using professional products or you're not licensed and you don't have insurance. So keep that in mind. But in the meantime, consider growing your business.